Hi everyone, I am Karan and welcome to Karan's Gyan. The question for today is, what the hell is wrong with ITC? ITC share price has been following for the past 2-3 to three weeks and investors feel a lot of problems in ITC's different business segments. So in this video, I would discuss about various problems ITC is facing in its different business segments. Talking about its business segments, ITC started as Imperial Tobacco Company in 1920 and sold only cigarettes for six decades. During the mid-1970s, they planned to become diversified and expanded into other segments. A fun fact for you, ITC was in the segments of edible oils and financial services. However, these segments didn't really take off and unfortunately, ITC had to shut them down. Let us understand ITC's big gun the monopoly of ITC which is tobacco business. So the tobacco business is a very peculiar business. You can't advertise your own products, you can't advertise cigarettes in this business. You can't package cigarettes according to the way you like it. You need to have a warning as you can see in this picture that covers 85% of the cigarette packet. Moreover, if you want to build a stronghold in this industry, you would have to have a very good business network that can reach to the most remote corners of this country. And ITC has all of them. These subtle features make ITC a monopoly in the segment of tobacco. Because new players can't enter this industry as they can't come up with promotions or advertisements and ITC has already have set up its own distribution network. ITC is an established player in the market with an unparalleled distribution network. It has about a very good popular cigarette bands and it has a borderline monopoly of 84% market share. ITC has been in this industry for about a century now and the return on capital employed for ITC's tobacco business is 112.8%. I challenge you to find any business, any business segment that has a sustained return on capital employed as high as ITC's tobacco business segment and you won't find any industry in India that can match this ROC consistently. This is what ITC has as its tobacco business. It is the cash cow of the company. Basically tobacco money runs ITC. Talking about the FMCG empire. So ITC in the mid 2000s the company made a flashy entry by challenging a lot of companies on every single product vertical. It challenged HUL and PNG in personal care products. It challenged Nestle in noodles and it challenged Palaji and Britannia in biscuits. Its FMCG empire is worth about 16,000 crore. Uh, Ashirwad leading the FMCG empire in the ATA segment of about 6,000 crore and last is the personal care product which is Vivelle and Candyman which is valued at about 500 crore. This is a long way. This is a long way since 2005 where ITC had revenues of only 500 crore in the segment of FMCG. But FMCG has a very very big problem and the problem is it has extremely poor profit margin and return on capital employed. If I compare FMCG's profitability with its competitors, where Britannia makes biscuits, PNG and HUL make personal care products and Nestle makes noodles, we can see the single digit returns, the single digit numbers are nowhere matched to the numbers presented by its competitors. Britannia has a profit margin of 12%, PNG a profit margin of 14%, Nestle about 16% and HUL about 17%. ROC of Nestle in the noodle segment is about 98%. Hence, ITC's FMCG segment has extremely poor profitability and like I said before, cigarette is running the share price of this company. And we can see the low segment margins of ITC's FMCG sector followed by hotels, then agribusiness and paper boards. We can see uh, the margins of cigarette business which is about 73% and cigarette is still the most profitable enterprise for ITC. What are the reasons behind the low profitability of this 
company in FMCG segment. ITC always wanted to build its own line of products without without resorting to acquisitions, and it has made all its brands from bottom up. Moreover, this is a brand building exercise. If you are not acquiring a company and starting your brands from scratch, you have to build your brands from scratch. And this takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money. You have to build promotional campaigns, run advertisements consistently, work with dealers by providing them higher margins and offer discounts to consumers. Moreover, ITC also tries to compete with its peers by offering further lower pricing on its products thus incurring high costs and eating into its profit margins now the problem with itc is like i said time and time again tobacco runs fmcg tobacco runs hotels if we look at this table right here this gives out the return on capital employed for all the segments cigarettes fmcg hotels agri business and paper packaging we can see the hotel business had a loss in quarter one financial year 21 whereas the capital employed during the quarter one was about 6000 crore whereas in the segment of cigarettes the capital employed was only 2000 crore whereas the profit was 2300 crores and here lies the problem hotels are a seasonal business and they cater to a very small group of customers these businesses ha uh, have uh, a lot of costs fixed to it. You'll have to furnish fixed costs, pay salary, and if you add these expenses to interest expenses, alcohol license fee, restaurant license fee, maintenance charges, you're looking at a lot of money that has to be deployed and extremely poor profitability. And hence, the economics of the luxury hotel chain is so messed up that ITC makes a return of capital of about 3% on the capital that's deployed for creating this business. And here lies the problem. The cigarette is running all the businesses, FMCG hotels. Moreover, tobacco also has some problems in it. Tobacco business doesn't look as good as it seems to from outside. So the thing with tobacco is that uh, it tobacco is a sin product. After all, the government can tax them and get away by taxing them because of public interest. On a good day, ITC will simply pass on the tax hike to customers. Compulsive smokers are sticky customers. They are willing to pay a couple of rupees as a premium, no matter what. However, you can't push them too far. If you push them too far, they'll have to make tough choices. They can switch brands they can maybe switch to different tobacco products or maybe they'll look elsewhere. Legal cigarettes actually only make up 10% of this entire industry and India is the fourth largest market for illegal cigarettes. So what I mean by illegal cigarettes is cigarettes whose uh, excise duty is not paid. We get a lot of cigarettes coming from uh, countries that have lower excise duty such as the Arab countries, GCC. Uh, now talking about the growth across segments. Now, the growth across segments has been fairly good from financial year 2015 to financial year 2020. Those segmental revenues have increased consistently and at a good pace. Now, talking about the other problem. This other problem might sound funny, but trust me, it is a very big problem for ITC. The problem is excess cash. The company is struggling with all the cash that is coming in. They have already paid out 85% of their profits as dividends. You might have noticed being a shareholder of ITC that you received a spectacular dividend this year. Yet ITC has about 25,000 crore in cash just lying on their balance sheet. And this is a problem. It has also generated 11,700 crores in financial year 2020 as free cash flows. The problem is we are, we are dealing with too much money right here. And yes, that is a problem because investors don't know what ITC will do with this 25,000 crores that is lying on their balance sheet in cash. If I look at the five year old price of ITC, 
ITC is actually trading at the price it was trading during September 2015, a five-year-old price. The diversification attempts in ITC have not worked out well as investors expected. The cigarette business isn't exactly harboring untapped potential and its capital allocation strategy isn't all that solid and thus the share price has reflected the ambiguities. Now the bottom line is, like I said before, ITC is a cigarette business trying to build an FMCG empire. Now to us investors, the question lie is, how should we really value ITC? Should we value ITC as a standalone cigarette business that will grow at a steady modest pace and keep generating cash forever? Or should we value it as an FMCG company with a lot of future potential? Because ITC is the third largest FMCG company in the country. After all, the company only recently acquired Sunrise Foods in a bid to foray into spice business. Or should we split up the share or should ITC's management split up the share into two different companies, one company of tobacco and the other company of FMCG and others and investors should value both these companies independently on its individual merits. So here lies our dilemma and I would love to look at your answers in the comment section. So guys, this is my take on ITC. I hope you liked the video. Thank you very much and have a nice day.